What up everybody, I'm Brandon, you're watching ADHD Game Dev Channel. Welcome to all the cool kids. Are you the cool kids? Am I the cool kids? Am I in the cool kids if I'm here? Are you here? Hey, you're here. Hey, I want to talk to you today about the differences of the conceptual logic about how you approach working in Game Maker versus how you work in Godot. I worked in Game Maker for about 10 years. I've worked in Godot so far for this year. A um, little bit in the shallow end of the pond there. I've also tooled around in Unity. I'm not an expert in, at any of this, and we're just chit-chatting. We're just talking. I'm not trying to put a bunch of graphics in comparison and dancing squirrels on screen, even though this is the ADHD Game Dev channel. Um, we're, we're talking conceptually. So let's compare and contrast the two so that you can wrap your head around which framework might work better for you. So Game Maker's overall logic is that you have a series of rooms that you build that's basically your level or your title screen or your different, uh, anything that's going to be on screen is going to be in a room. And into that room, you're going to put objects. And the objects are how you get your code into the room. You will have a series of events on the object to trigger code at different points. It would be a create event, a step event, a collision event, a destroy event, things like that, timer events. Anyway, it, it, it's all a different trigger point at which you can run code. You can have a script that would be a standalone block of code that you could drop into any of those events. All right, that's the general general high level logic of it. And the the parent child relationship is important because this is about to come up into the way that Godot thinks. In Game Maker, you will explicitly tell a child object and the object itself that it has a parent, and so it's going to inherit everything that is in those events from the parent. Okay. That means that you could have a kind of a, a proto NPC or a core um, enemy type and anything that it needs to have in it you can put into the parent and then just put in the differences into the into the child object i do that all the time in game maker projects like with an enemy the enemy is going to need health it's going to need a a health bar it's going to need to detect when it's hit by a player collision uh, bullets and and things like that so that would all be in the parent and then the child i don't have to copy it all again and again all right this entire framework of rooms, objects, events, and the way that scripts are done is completely different over in Godot land. It is very different. It is different, again, even from Unity, though I think it would compare a little bit more favorably, a little bit more closely, uh, that is to say, with Unity. Um, it has more in common with it than, than Game Maker, I think. Uh, but still, even compared to either either one Godot goes into a completely different direction with its kind of flexible open architecture with the way you you approach working in it and it's a little bit confusing at first especially since I, it was in a structured structured organized kind of a world of game maker in unity i was confused for a while um it is a hierarchy it is a node tree a file structure and the parent child system is completely loose and free because if you make something in that hierarchy into a child position it's now a child uh, of of the one instance of it in the game world okay rather than having a concept of objects in a room Godot dispenses with all of that and it uses a catch-all term called scenes which is going to throw you especially if you come from unity um, and if you're in game maker you might think that a scene would be a room it's not except when it is uh, <laughs> the reason it's such a weird idea is that a a um, prefab in unity or an object in in game maker is a scene in Godot a scene can be dropped into a level, a, a room, a space, which is called a scene. It's a little weird to wrap your head around it, and I think that's probably the biggest leap of logic. Now, when I first started in it, that was a big conceptual thing that I had to start to get to grips with is why they did that and the more i've worked with it the more sense it makes even though it sounds counterintuitive how come a scene is an object and a scene is a level and a scene is a room and a scene is a box and a scene is a coin um, because of the flexible nature of godot the fact that a script unlike in game maker a script is a standalone piece of code 
that is completely self-contained start to finish. You don't have events. Events is a game maker concept that doesn't exist in other other um, platforms, other, other environments. Uh, usually you're going to be working, say, in C Sharp or over in Unity or anywhere else. You'd have an on ready in Godot script. That's your create event. It's like, okay, as soon as you're ready, uh, declare all this stuff and get it all going. Um, it would have a, a function would be an update, which would be run as quick as you can, which is what? A step event. Uh, but that's all contained in code. And I could take a code a block of code and drop it anywhere onto any object, any any scene or any individual component of a scene called a node. Uh, and it will run. It will try to run anyway. Uh, it, it, depending on how you wrote it, it might, it might crash. Uh, but it, 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 it should theoretically be able to run. You can take scenes and make them an apparent child relationship of other ones just by doing a graphical arrangement of them. The reason we use such a flexible, weird idea is that I could theoretically take a game controller script and drop it onto the top level node, the level itself, and make the entire level respond to a controller. <laughs> because Godot is just crazy. Um, if I take a coin scene and make it the child of a moving platform scene, well now the coin will what? Will pick up all of the behaviors of the parent that it's attached to. And if I like that, I can make a new scene out of it, a new, I, I, could, I can make a new um, prefab, a new object out of it, and have a whole new standalone version of it. Uh, because everything is a very broad mix and match kind of an idea, you have, you have a core, core fundamental building block called a node, and a node can be just a vague 2D node or a 3D node. Uh, and it's just a placeholder, or it could be something that's already pre-built with functionality built into it already. This is something that GameMaker doesn't have, is a pre-built building block. So think of it as a building block. So that building block would be a character controller building block. It would be an area 3D building block. It would be a static body, uh, a solid object, kind of a building block. It would be a building block of a control node that's meant to be for user interface and things like that. So once you start putting those all together into a hierarchy, you start to build up into something bigger, and that is where you get a scene. So if that scene happens to be a box with gravity that can be broken open to get a coin, great, you now save that as a breakable box scene, and that can be reused again and again, and it's like an object in Game Maker, right? But we could also make a scene that would be the entire level and put a bunch of boxes into it or or mix and match however we want to. And uh, it, it, really, it really is kind of a mind-blowing experience. I think the most the biggest grinding of gears between the two is how open the coding architecture is in game maker it kind of get you kind of get away with murder in gml everything is sort of a public variable if you were to have an object you know your player object and you just refer to it as player dot player health you can refer to it from anywhere player dot speed uh, it is going to be a, a constant that's built into the to the system already, and you can just ask for it. Um, in any other in any other uh, uh, a game development engine, you're you're going to have to specify that a little bit more and connect to it a little bit more. So I think that being a bit more rigid in your thinking as far as coding goes, a bit more um, planned ahead, and is required. But then working with the engine as a whole is very loose and free and crazy. <laughs> um, the other thing that I think that kind of uh, tripped me up a little bit is that everything can have a property dial down. So you can drill down, 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 uh, deeper and deeper down into the side menu to where you're 10 layers deep. Um, and just creating new stuff off the cuff. Like you could say, I'm, you know, I've got a fog type node and I'm going to add noise to it. Now the noise is now something that I can drill into, and the noise can have more stuff added to it down below. Uh, it, and it just, it gets pretty deep. Um, there's a lot of depth, I think, that is hidden in the simple interface of the whole thing. Uh, but anyway, there, there's, there's definitely a different mindset about it, and I think that is, at the end of the day, it is, if I were to sum it all up for you, 
Game Maker is a series of levels, a series of rooms with objects running in them. And Godot is a hierarchy, a tree that is built out of individual nodes that can also be packed up into scenes uh, for ease of use. And that hierarchy can be moved around to change the behaviors. So nodes can be rearranged and scenes can be rearranged as you're making your environment. And it doesn't have to be fixed to an individual room. The entire thing can be packed up as a new scene that would be a level. So you could call and instantiate or switch to a new scene. <laughs> so it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, but anyway, it's a lot of fun. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if, if you're smarter than me, that's not surprising. Uh, leave comments down below to correct all the things I got wrong, which is probably a lot. Um, and uh, please lick the video and subscribe to your mom. Uh, also, don't forget to wish list Tiny the Last Wayfinder on Steam if you wouldn't mind doing that. If you're interested in seeing indie devs like me get ahead and fight the freaking algorithm. Yeah, fight the power. I appreciate you. Be awesome today. Bye now.